OK, if you are going to prove a trigonometric identity, then what you'll be given is some expression on the left-hand side of your equation and then some expression on the right-hand side. Okay, And you'll be asked to prove that this is true. Now, the way that you go about this really depends upon the problem. There's no silver bullet for this, I'm afraid. Okay. Now, you either start with the left-hand side and improve that you can get to the right-hand side. Or you start with the right-hand side and prove that you can get to the left-hand side. Through Both of these are through algebraic manipulation okay? and using trigonometric identities. Now, you may be in a situation where you can do so much with the left-hand side and then you could do so much with the right-hand side and then you can kind of join them up in the middle. Now, there's nothing really wrong with that, okay? Just so long as you're showing a clear logical set of steps that go from one side, left-hand side, to the right-hand side, or from the right-hand side to the left-hand side, okay? So you do want to show it as a logical steps from one side to the other. Now, there is also this underlying problem, and, a little, and there is a little bit of an argument that goes with it, that um, some students, and you know, I, I've been guilty of this in the past as well, um, mainly because I didn't really think about what I was doing, clearly. Um, the problem is that it's very tempting to work with both sides simultaneously. Now, what I mean by that isn't that I start with the left-hand side, do a little bit, start with the right-hand side, do a little bit, and then join them up. Okay, I'm not talking about that. I mean actually moving things across the equal sign. Okay? This you cannot do. Now, the reason why you can't do that, and, you know, it, it looks nice... Um, and seems appropriate and seems like you should be able to do it because what you're doing is you're rearranging it until you get down to one of the trigonometric identities which you know to be true. However, because you've started moving things across an equal sign, what you've done there unknowingly is assumed that the two sides are equal and then you've shown that they are. The problem is in that initial assumption. You cannot assume that they are equal just because that is what you are proving. So you need to start with the left-hand side or the right-hand side and get to the opposite side to show that they are equal. You cannot assume that they are equal at the start. So there is that kind of argument, though, um, which causes a problem because essentially because it is a trigonometric identity we know that one side left hand side is going to be equal to the right hand side um, which obviously causes the problem um, the left hand side will always be equal to the right hand side when proving a trigonometric identity and so because you know that knowledge it kind of becomes, um, you know, uh, it, it feels like it's a good idea that I can just move things across the equal sign. But you can't do it that way, I'm afraid. Mathematically, it's wrong to do that, even though we know that the left-hand side is equal to the right-hand side. But in order to prove it and to show it correctly, you must start with one side and get to the other side. Okay? So bear that in mind when working through proving trigonometric identities.